It's more accurate really to think about dopamine as driving motivation and craving to go seek rewards. It's a way of tabulating where we are in our life. Are we doing well or are we doing poorly? And that happens on very short time scales. Do you wake up feeling good? Or do you wake up feeling low? Or on long time scales, if you're halfway through a long degree or you're halfway through your life, how are you doing? How do you gauge that? It has everything to do with how much dopamine you were releasing in the previous days and weeks and years. So you're always comparing it and all of this is subconscious. But what's cool is that once you make these processes conscious, once you understand a little bit about how dopamine is released and how it changes our perspective and our behavior, then you can actually work with it. So it's one of the instances where knowledge of knowledge actually turns out to be a really useful tool. First of all, if people can do what you do, they're going to be in a much better position in life. Doesn't matter if it's school, sport, relationship, any domain of life. If you can start to register that craving and that friction and that desire, that almost low level of agitation, sometimes high level of agitation, that is I'm trying to impose my will on the world in a benevolent way, we hope, that's dopamine. It's working with its close cousin, which is epinephrine, which is adrenaline. They are very close cousins. In fact, dopamine manufactures epinephrine. A lot of people don't know this, but adrenaline is actually made from the molecule dopamine. So those two are hanging out together. It's like crave and work, crave and work, crave and work. And then you get the win. And some people allow the big peak in dopamine to be associated with the win. And smart people learn to adjust their celebration internally. This is all internal. You could throw the biggest party in the world, but as long as you're in, laid back and looking at this, not letting yourself get manic crazy, you won't necessarily crash as hard. And pretty soon your system will reset. So that you take the day, you clean up the dishes, you relax, you go, what now? I'm feeling a little low. Rather than going out and spiking your dopamine again, just wait, understand that the scale will reset again. Give yourself a few days where you're gonna feel a little kind of underwhelmed, things aren't gonna be as interesting. It's gonna be hard to trigger that big release because you just had the peak. If you adjust that, you relax, you understand there's always a little bit of a postpartum depression. We sometimes hear about postpartum depression, that's a clinical thing, but there's always that kind of, today's not as exciting as the previous days. What am I gonna do with my life? But then if you let it start ratcheting up again, then what you realize is your capacity to tap into dopamine as a motivator not just seeking dopamine rewards, that is infinite with great certainty that this is how you were able to build a big company and sell it, how you've been able to build a successful podcast and sell it, how you constantly seeking because seeking is the reward. And I think for most people, we think of the reward as the finish line. And so the key is to get to the finish line, step into the end zone, but no end zone dance. And now I'm gonna go do it again. That's the key to doing it over and over. And when I see big athletes or academics or anyone or musicians and they rise and crash, it's clear they've lost the touch with the motivation evoked dopamine. And they've lost touch probably because it hasn't really been described by the neuroscience community. And the key is you have to walk the staircase again. You don't get to do this as a square wave pull. You don't get to just ascend. It's always up, down, up a little bit higher, down, up. That's the function.